Are you a kid or an adult who's crabby a lot? <laughs> Are you a kid every time your mother says you better do that? You're not. Not gonna do it. <clears throat> Physical. Ah. <laughs> This could be an allergy. No kidding. Show them, uh, Brian. Here, I want you to see um, Brother Ned Rubert here. Here's a good looking young man. You'll see him in a moment. He's much thinner now, but he's going to eat this tomato. Look at this. You don't have to. You can bite several bites, honey. All right, Ned. Look at this. I can't help it. I know, but you've got to try to control yourself. Boy, I tell you what. Hey, glad you're here. Okay. Feeling better? Yeah, I'm doing all I can to be here. The perfume is and everything, and the odors in this place are so bad. You think it's the perfume, do you? Yeah, there was a lady standing in front of us a second ago, and my man wouldn't even filter the perfume. Uh, this is no gag. I mean, you get a little whiff of some kind of a perfume and... Ooh, I'm gone. It, yeah. it just wrecks me. Um, um, I have a lot of ticks already. Yeah. Well, Nan, Mom, no picnic. This is not funny. No. You must have thought, oh, my God, what's going on? Uh, Ned was misdiagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. That's a uh, involuntary... Uh, Yes, a very, very distracting, but hardly fatal. You know, it's just hard to get a job when you got Tourette's. And that's what you thought he had, huh? Yeah, well, that's what everybody said he had. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and he was actually a allergic to what? Well, almost everything except pork and soy. But uh, milk caused chronic bedwetting. Uh, natural gas caused severe tics and violent behavior. Mm -hmm. Even... Even television sets, the electromagnetic radiation off of television sets and computers and really? microwave ovens would make him violent. Uh -huh. Doris Rapp, MD, get in here. You're the board-certified environmental medical specialist and pediatric allergist. You're the reason we're here today. Your book is titled, Is This Your Child? Among other things, you want this audience to know that uh, some of the doctors my age uh, are not altogether current on the fact that we, all of us, are taking in all kinds of uh, synthetic odors uh, in the air, particulate, not to mention food, and it can create really distracting behavioral problems. How am I doing, Dr. Rapp? You're doing right. You understand. Well, we, make the point for me. We even. have managed to pollute our air, our water, our foods, our clothing, our homes, our schools, and our work areas. Yeah. And the youngsters you're seeing today, such as this fine youngster, cannot go, many of them can't go to school anymore because of all the chemicals. They can't go shopping. They can't come into a group. They can't go to a movie. There are many things they can't do. Everyone knows about allergies affecting the nose and the eyes and the lungs, but allergies or environmental factors can affect how we think. And suddenly these children can change. And then when you treat them, they can come back to normal in a few minutes. But the parents for years have problems because nobody knows what's wrong with them. Is Jonathan here? Yes. Hey, Jonathan. What's up? Hey. It's not so bad being on TV. You know. I'm on it every day, and look how young I look. Uh, okay, Jonathan, thanks for letting us uh, uh, drop in here on you and uh, invade your privacy just a bit. You become violent after receiving one drop of tree extract. So, he's allergic to trees? Again, people think of hay fever and asthma from tree pollen, but some children become violent or depressed or sad, Here's suicidal. Sh it just depends. It's potluck. Brian, here's a videotape of Jonathan. Uh, now, this uh, good-looking young man is reading his lesson here. What did the pastry say to the bread? Mm. I've never heard that one before. I don't he know. got a lot of crust. <laughs> now, what happened here? He was skin tested for tree pollen. <laughs> Jonathan, don't fight your mother. Yeah. We, I'm going to read something. One drop of allergy extract can do this, and they don't know what's being tested but you can see the dramatic change in just a few minutes. And then when you give them the right dilution, it comes back to normal. But a lot of people don't believe that, but it, it happens. 
Uh, Carol, do I understand uh, uh, your mom? <laughs> Proudly so. Um, you're Jonathan's mom, and you took Jonathan off breast milk, put him onto cow's milk, and, and was that the first uh, alarm bell? Tell me. It was the first alarm bell to me that there was something wrong with the um, things that I was feeding him, but it didn't it didn't show that that it was an allergy. It, it showed as behavior changes. So any of the pediatricians that I went to for sinus infections or any kind of fluid in the faces, they would feed him orange triamenic and just make him worse. Mm -hmm. And they would say, well, you know, I've had been kicked out of doctor's offices because um, I've you, gone you back. Disagreed and with them. I disagreed with them and my yeah. child was uncontrollable in the doctor's office. And you were probably at the end of your uh, oh, proverbial rope, rope yourself. So you started popping off then. I, I understand that. I mean, this is me. This makes you cry, huh? Oh, it Depressed. Cry. What, what's the matter? What did I do wrong? Ah, ah, ah. First, you're inconsistent as a parent. Then you um, think you're a bad parent. So you go through the psychotherapy route. Then I you know. think that you have a bad child. So yeah. you take them through the psychotherapy route. And then all of a sudden you say to yourself, well, maybe there just isn't any answer. And maybe I better give this child to foster care because you can't handle them yourself. Yeah, that's terrifying. Uh, Carol, uh, Jonathan went misdiagnosed for years. He would have violent reaction every time he went outside to play. So yes. Uh, and what are the culprits then? What was what was really doing the job here? Um, trees, molds, a lot of the foods, sugar especially, anything with processed foods with dyes in it. Um, violent reactions. We're talking that he would be outside playing for five or ten minutes and then suddenly become violent. Yeah. How'd you find this out, Dr. Rapp? I mean, how do you, uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, they put liquid dust on you, and if you puffed up where they put a hole in your pin hole, in your, you know, then you were allergic to it. Well, is, it this, is it this simple today? or Actually, it's even more simple. You can put the drops under the tongue or the drops of the dust of the food. And you can see the you, eyes and the nose and things and you, happen. And you can see things happen in a few minutes using the newer, more precise methods of testing, which is called environmental medicine. Okay. Alicia... Guess who's on TV? Uh, Alicia, you, Alicia, you become giggly and giddy after eating pee. Am I lying? Peas. Yeah. Peas. Green peas. You know, when I eat peas, my tongue is used to get really kind of swollen. Really, it's good. You know, this is by way of saying that all these things that are good for you usually are, but for some people, and for you, yeah, not so hot. I love peas, but they make me just get out of control. Let me show them. You don't mind if I show them this no. boy talk about. Um, thank you, Alicia. You're a very brave young woman, and you're doing this for us because you know there are other kids. I'd look at this beautiful child here, talk and chat, and everything's yeah, fine. I like I like cupcakes, but I'm allergic to them, and I like. And I like all the stuff that I'm allergic to. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm, 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 Alicia, do you feel dizzy? I, I don't feel dizzy. You don't feel dizzy? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Nobody laughed. This audience knows that isn't funny, uh, Alicia. And, it, and it's not the kind of behavior that, you, you know... Giggling's fine, but you want to do it when you want to do it, not be out of control like, you know, when the peas tell you to do it. I understand yeah. that, don't I? Yeah. I'm a pretty smart guy, you know. Yeah, very smart. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, Mom. Suzanne, tell us about this. Uh, when did you, uh, you, you must have really felt as depressed and bewildered and maybe even angry as some of these other mothers. So Yeah, she, uh, Alicia hasn't doesn't have quite as intense reactions as some people do. but She's she, not aggressive. She doesn't no. clutch. She doesn't... Uh, she clutches, but she doesn't hurt. She's never damaged furniture, and she's never damaged us. But she had what they originally called temper tantrums, and then she was a difficult child, mm -hmm. and then she was manipulative, and then she was emotionally impaired for the school. And everyone thought that she was doing all these things on purpose. Until one day she came in from the playing outside and set, and was acting really mad, you know, like the temper tantrums. Uh -huh. And I said, what are you mad at? And she says, nothing. Mm. What are you mad at? Oh, nothing. Why are you doing that? I'm mad. Why? You know, no reason. And we started keep, keeping track of the mad episodes and when they happened. She 
can kind of flip over between being mad and being silly like this pretty easily. So you get one, you're kind of close to the other one. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, or sometimes she gets really afraid, too. Yeah. Uh, she was reacting to allergies, to certain foods, chemicals, and even freshly cut grass. So. Mm -hmm. And clothing. One of our big problems was finding out that all the uh, detergents, she's very allergic to some of the things that are in common detergents. So when people walk by her with nice, fresh clothes, sometimes she has a problem, mm -hmm. which was hard for other people to believe, really. Uh -huh. but. Uh, I assume you want us to know that with increased uh, industrialization and uh, polymers, and you know, the, the chemists have done things that the even the their, their fathers could never have dreamed of. What's worse, the body can't adjust to what they've created. Uh -huh. So Our we're, we're inhaling, we're touching, we're in various ways taking in all kinds of funny... We're getting polluted in the inside and we're becoming toxic dump sites inside our own body and this is leading to problems in children, adults, and even infants. Are and you there, caller? Yes, day. I am. What did you want to say? This is, this is really um, kind of frightening almost. Um, I have an eight-year-old son who, by the way, is an asthmatic. Um, he has been treated for allergies. He's, he's almost showing not to this extreme, but... The things that I'm watching in these children are, are like my son. It's 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 almost kind of frightening me. As a, as a matter of fact, today he is being tested at, at, with his school system for every known disability that you could possibly imagine. He's had problems reading. He has problems in school. He has problems. He was kicked out of an after school program three times for aggressive behavior, and uh -huh. and it, it's never it's never. All the time, it just comes and goes with him. The little girl, the, the squeaky voice, the little boy that was almost beating on his mother. We've gone through this, my husband and I, and yeah. this, this amazes me. Can I just, this forgive me. Uh, Doris Rapp is a certified MD. She is a board certified environmental medical specialist and pediatric allergist. She's clinical assistant professor of pediatric state university of New York at Buffalo. I think she would say that first of all, she's not about to diagnose anybody on a television program on the telephone but she is she does want you to know that allergies may be the problem absolutely and most of the people the youngsters that you see on this show uh finally realize that their problem might be something in the environment or something they're eating because they happen to see a television show that showed some children and until then many of them never it never entered their head or they went to the doctor and said, every time a kid eats this or smells this, this is what happens. And the doctor said, oh, no way. Yeah. This, I might say, is not exclusive to children. We'll meet some adults <laughs> who have their own challenges. And you'll hear Dr. Rapp say that uh, allergic reactions can happen in utero. Is your baby kicking your tummy too much? Could it be? I don't know. We'll be back in just a moment. Ruthann Fuller joins us with her daughter, uh, Marsha. Marsha, you're 10. Yeah. And your problems began two weeks old? Holy cow, you don't even remember that. Uh, Mom gave Marsha vitamin drops with fluoride. Just as the pediatrician had prescribed. Because you had well water. Yes. So you weren't in a fluoridated system. Correct. Fluoridation has pretty well been demonstrated to really arrest caries and dental uh, problems uh, in appropriate amounts and so on. So you're the good mother. You give her the supplement because you don't have fluoride in your well water. And what happens? She cried 12 to 14 hours a day. She had diarrhea all the time and was extremely irritable. And um, this went on pretty much for two years. She well, uh, excuse me, uh, Ruthann, let me show Marcia here. Here's Marcia on tape. Uh, this, uh -huh. 
this beautiful and talented young woman is uh, doing schoolwork here. How do you feel now, Marcia? I can't hear you. Honey. Your other allergies, uh, Marcia? Dust, mold, and tobacco. No. <laughs> we didn't I, test for tobacco. <laughs> you see, you don't want to disagree with the host. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it says here you chew tobacco. <laughs> oh. uh, well, what are you allergic to, uh, Marcia? Fluoride, um, sugar, molds, dust. Island. Yeah. And when you got uh, when you isolated these from her, uh, uh, separated these materials from her, you see the improvement, do you, Mom? Oh, definitely. She's a different kid. We have a different child now than we ever had in our whole life. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything to this, Dr. Rao? Nothing except that she was she saw very well trained physicians. She was in a hospital for fifty seven days, wasn't it? At seven hundred and fifty dollars a day, and no one believed that it could be the fluorides that were causing the problem. And then when she came in our office, we just made an allergy extract of the fluoride solution. We gave her a few drops. She started to cry. We gave her the right treatment, and she seem better and it's it's just um, it's a shame that more people don't understand that chemicals can have strange effects on some children and the mothers are smarter than you think and many times they can give you answers when uh, no one else can are you there caller yeah. you wanted yeah you wanted to say um, I have a five-month-old baby and this is, this terrifies me I just started him on solid foods and uh, he's showing signs of a little temper now and I want to how do I know if it's temper or if it's an allergy you Oh. <laughs> well, you're not going to find out on the phone. Can you see your screen? Yeah. Here are, uh, number 40, Brian. Here are major physical symptoms of possible allergy in toddlers. Now, yours, your child is an infant, so, you know, there is a difference. But here are major physical, here they are. Red earlobes, red cheeks, dark eye circles, bags under the eyes, wrinkles under the eyes. Glazed, glassy glazed eyes, a spaced out look, wiggly, restless legs. I've known talk show hosts with most of these symptoms. <laughs> Dislike of being touched or cuddled. Um, not funny, huh? This can be, uh, this could be the sign of tr trouble it ahead. Could be in some youngsters, especially if they have uh, allergies in their family and they have what's called the allergic salute. If they go like that, Think about the fact that maybe things are also affecting their brain, could be affecting their bladder so they wet the bed, their muscles so their legs ache or shoulders ache, could be causing constant headaches or belly aches. And unless you start to think about what did you eat, touch, or smell, you're not going to come up with the answers. You still there, Mom? Yeah. Uh, here's some more. How old's your baby? Five months old. Five months. Is your baby colicky? No, not at all. He's breastfed, so he's never had that problem. Fine. Does he spit? Is it a she or he? It's a he. He. Does he spit? It? Excess, Drool. Excessive. Drool. He drools, yeah. Well, does he drool to his shoelaces? No. Okay, that's normal drooling then. All right, here, here, are, here. Are, let me just go through this quickly. Prolonged colic, excessive spitting, repeated vomiting, diarrhea and or constipation, congestion of the nose or chest, eczema or itchy rashes, restlessness, screaming or prolonged crying, dislike of cuddling, need to be walked and bounced. Excessive drooling, extreme perspiration, excessive crib rocking, head banging, walking by seven to ten months. Uh, repeated ear infections, gentle touching, reluctance to stay dressed, rapid pulse, demand of constant attention. Hmm. Whoa. Well, I mean, everybody's got a kid who's going to meet some of that criteria, right? That's stupid yeah. if you meet them. Uh, did anything jump out at you, Mom? Yeah. What? About half of those things, but it just happens to coincide with the time I started him on solid foods. Well, that's the time that infant sensitivities are most apt to appear is when you stop breastfeeding and start milk or start foods. And maybe one of those foods is a problem and you might have to talk to your doctor about adding each food separately at a four-day interval and seeing which one might be causing a change in your infant. If your baby walks up his, your chest, arches his head back and starts to scream and push away from you so you can hardly hold him, sometimes it's because they ate or smelled something that's bothering them. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, are you feeding him peas? 
No. <laughs> and you're not, uh, and he's not drinking cow's milk, is he? He's no, he's, been, he's not. Yeah. Is he eating cheese, yogurt, or ice cream? No, just rice cereal, bananas. That's about it, you know. Well, I watch out for rice, rice cereal, and bananas. That's what they recommend. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are you going to feed him? Wet Kleenex? I mean, there's going to be nothing left here. <laughs> Uh, no, no. What what she may have to do is talk to the doctors so that she has rice only every four days and bananas. Rice on Mondays and Fridays, bananas on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and the other days eat other foods. And she'll be able to see that only on the days when she eats the rice or the bananas, the baby acts that way. Yeah. I was wondering if the children like the guests today are they able to attend public school or? Some of them can and some of them can't. Many of them can't attend school until they've received treatment. Some of them have to be treated with an allergy extract prepared from the air in the school. I, I know that the um, pollen count has been really high this year. Yes. And I was wondering how the children deal with that, uh, something that they can't really get away from. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, Carol uh, or uh, Ned, Jonathan, Alicia, come on. I can't do this by myself. Ned do you notice talk. it when the pollen count is up? My, my child is chemically sensitive. I wanted to answer that question about the banana. It's not even just the, the taste of banana with Jonathan. It's the smell of banana. We were in Dr. Raff's office, and we already had done banana, eating, you know, the tasting part of it. And Jonathan went off on the smell of the banana and broke my finger during a reaction. Um, which we stopped in with, seconds with the allergy extract, yes. the banana, and the right dilution. Melissa is allergic her, to rice. Her doctor, one of her allergists assured me that she couldn't be allergic to rice because that's not one of the things people are allergic to, but she does happen to be somewhat allergic to rice. Mm -hmm. um, excuse but how do they deal with it when it's um, outside in the, in the air like that? And you, you can treat uh, for allergies due to outside things like uh, pollen and molds and things inside your house such as dust with either allergy extracts under the tongue or by injection. But the insurance companies don't always pay for it, even though it helps. Did you want in this, Ned? Yes, Ned wants. Um, I was going to say that I have a severe allergy problem with bananas, and I can't eat them. But I would um, think that suggesting that if somebody's going to eat bananas, that it could be an allergic problem and that they might want get tested in that if you're going to feed your baby rice, if it's one of the few things that it can eat, if you're not able to perfectly rotate, it won't kill you because rice on a macrobiotic diet, people eat that stuff for months sometimes <laughs> every day for two meals out of yes. two out of three meals in every day. Yes. Well, I do. Thank you. Uh, what would be the fee for this consultation? <laughs> And we'll be back in just a moment. To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Yes, ma'am, you wanted to ask. I'm wondering if these allergies, if you could get them later in life, and if yes, is there anything you can Very do to prevent them? question. Yes. Nancy Z uh, Zampano. Ha here is uh, no child, to be sure. You're a fourth grade school teacher. Yes. And you are allergic uh, friendly, so to speak. I mean, those uh, allergies get you pretty well, don't they? Looking back, I realized that I've had allergies for a long time, but I never recognized those behaviors as allergy related but I've just started testing about a month ago and I'm re very allergic to phenols, molds, dust, milk. You uh, uh, suffer severe fatigue, strong headaches. You have a complete lack of energy. Doctors had no idea what was wrong with you. Here's your videotape, watch this. Uh huh. I feel pretty good. I just drove in and I took some histamine and serotonin a little while ago. And I have a little bit of numbness in my arms and in the back of my neck, but my mood is good and I feel good. I'm starting to get teary. I have a lot of cramping. My face is numb. I feel pain down in my ears. It's the calm before the storm. I'm having some trouble walking. I'm very hot. I'm starting to feel irritable. I'm just teary. Uh, as a result of what? 
uh, did you sustain all those? That was um, mold. Mold. Yes. This means she'd probably be worse on moldy days, and the kind of complaints that she had are typical of adults, tired, fatigue, headaches, uh, periods of having difficulty remembering, things of that sort. How much research is being done on this, and is there treatment available for the people who are afflicted? That's one of the big problems is that most of the doctors that recognize this and know how to treat it are environmental medical specialists. And although we have many scientific studies to prove it, uh, individuals or, or businesses with vested interests have managed to, to uh, influence the insurance companies, for example, so that you cannot select the doctor you want because that doctor will not be paid for treating you. I've never seen anything so scientific in my life. You get an injection, and you're fine, and within two or three minutes, you're not fine. I can't walk, I can't balance myself to get out of a chair. This is an injection of a concentrate it's, of the material to which you are allergic? It's just one drop of a mold or phenol or milk or wheat or egg, a standard allergy extract. And they don't know what they're being tested for usually, and within seconds they'll be sick or have uh, uh, a complaint such as headaches or a change in their activity or behavior. And then when you give them the correct dilution of the same thing, within minutes, they're perfectly normal yeah. again. I do ask you, and I'm sure you've given your thoughtful uh, consideration to the, you know, healthcare is costing us $800 billion a year. 800 it, billion. It would cost a lot less if we tried to find out why people were sick, uh, I got was rid say, of the cost, uh, and started to sure. stop treating the effect. Yes, incidentally, it's not your fault that it costs 800 billion a year. <laughs> but here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the nightmare, I think, on the part of some carriers and companies. Oh, I will, I've been working near the Xerox machine, excuse me. I, oh, I'm near the air conditioner. Oh, I'm near the windows. Oh, they just they clean just the windows. Oh, they just synthetic carpets. Oh, I'm near the vending machine but if I, these things are making people sick shouldn't we start I'm near to try a to computer find out terminal why? my head is dizzy <laughs> everybody's dizzy gonna have something terminal. wrong with them and then you're gonna have lines up at insurance claims and there goes the whole neighborhood no i think it'll be the other way around i think these individuals have been sick for years and without treatment they would be very sick adults they would be on tremendous amounts of medicine and just think about all the money that, that the Fuller spent for the one hospitalization because no one listened that she was sensitive to fluorides. Are you, uh, Karen, is it Cromasco? Yes, that's right. You, yes, Mrs. Cromasco is here with her son, Daryl. Your hand is in the air. Uh, Karen, yes. you wanted to say, why don't you stand and let okay. us hear from you? Because, yes, that's true. You might get a lot of people coming and complaining with placebo effects or because they want to get money from the insurance right. company. Yeah. But you can reproduce any of these tests with a reputable in, uh, specialist in environmental medicine. These things do not show up in, an, in a regular allergist's office, but you can reproduce them. So the insurance company should only cover the ones that can be reproduced in a clinical uh, ecologist or in a, specialist in a, yes, environmental in, medicine office. It, when, and in an isolated study where there's a direct cause and effect, you don't think this should be a controversial thing. It's quite obvious that this is what's bothering you. That's right. And what is bothering your son, Daryl, uh, here's a here's a, another good looking young man who's have was having trouble in school. Here is Daryl's tape. Show let's see Daryl. Okay, Daryl. Here we go. Daryl Prevas School. Look at this. How you feel Look at this happy child. Hi. Can you tell me how you feel? Angry. Angry? And sad. Angry and sad. Daryl, how do you feel? No, no, no. Can you tell me how you feel, Daryl? No. How do you feel, Daryl? Angry. Um, what are you angry at? Eat boy, you bugs me. Yeah, who bugs you? <laughs> That's <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, uh, Daryl, no kidding. Thanks. I mean, obviously, you're uh, uh, you know one of the real good guys. And that is embarrassing. But sure it is. this is a success story. That reaction was from the air in his school after construction was done in that school. And whenever he goes in the school, that is what we will see. His pulse will be 120 at sitting still. Out in the playground, it will only be 100 running and playing. You wanted to say, Daryl? I'm glad my mom knows about allergies because other moms would just get angry at me and like think I was bad. And I think that's good that yeah. everybody should know. Well, you got cranky like this, you know. Uh... <laughs>
you know, you know, when you got, you know, cranky like that, just happened. I mean, you couldn't help it. It's not like you sat down and said, hey, I think I'm going to be a real turkey today or anything like that, huh? You felt it coming. You feel what? A, a, a crabbiness. Well, it just comes like slightly and then it gets like worse. More intense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Maybe. I'll give you I'll give you a chance. You wanted okay. to say my Yes, what I do want okay. Uh, what I want to say is our Wellington County Board in Ontario has recognized they can save many, many dollars by giving these kids what they need, giving clean classrooms, just use vinegar on the desk, just use water watercolor uh, markers, just don't be, allow perfume in the classroom. You can save millions of health care dollars. All you have to do is listen to these kids, get back to nature, use vinegar for the desk, use borax. Bake, we we uh, gave him his books, his French books. His pulse went up because to 100 what? again. This is, these are biodegradable uh, uh, odors. They have that no smell. There are natural substances that can be used for yeah. cleaning in schools yeah you can put in an air purifier you can stop the school buses from polluting the air outside when nobody's in them yeah. and the this helps children decrease the costs increase ac increases academic performance yes. and Dar increases attendance there all we did Why was put an air purifier it? in the room his percentile score in iq went up 19 percentile points and we'll be back in just a moment thanks mom <laughs> I just have one question. How sure. old does a child have to be to be tested? Gee, we test them under one year at six months, eight months. When they start to have trouble and it looks like it might be due to something they're eating or smelling, we start to treat them right away. Uh, that, yeah, m make your statement again very briefly, Dr. Rapp. For those who joined us late, what is your point? What are you doing here anyway, for God's sake? <laughs> Basically, I'm trying to get the message out that allergies are much more than dust, pollen and molds causing hay fever and asthma, that foods and chemical sensitivities can bother us tremendously, that parents can figure out answers on their own if they increase their awareness and start to pay attention. My child was fine or I felt fine until I ate, touched or smelled what? And they can figure out a lot of answers, then find a doctor who will listen. And if the doctor says you can't treat food allergies and, and these dust and molds don't affect the brain and affect how you feel and act, you should keep hunting because that doctor is saying, I don't know how to treat these things. Yeah. Uh, is it Sinise? Yes. Laura, would you kindly stand? You are here, Mrs. Sinise, with your son, Brian. Brian is 13. Okay. Uh, let me just give him the brief profile here on Brian. Brian is a good guy. Lots of <laughs> talent. Obviously good looking. And uh, will win a Nobel Prize someday. We do want this audience to know, however, that Brian had constant violent outbursts and fights with other neighborhood kids resulted in his family moving from their former Long Island. You had to move. Yeah. What's up here, Mom? Um, Brian started with allergies, and I can go back to when Dr. Rapp introduced into her book, Back Into Utero. Um, Brian was a baby that just moved all over. He kicked under the ribs. He did everything he could to keep me awake for almost six straight months. Um, allergic to milk after it was born, a uh, special formula, and then it just continued. And then I looked and I saw he was allergic to feathers. I had testing done, found I was allergic to things. And it continued to get worse and his behavior got worse. And he looked like the kid on the block that was the troublemaker, uh, the bully. Um, and he cried and he didn't want to be this way. And he would cry at night when he went to bed and say, please, mommy. Please help me. I don't want to do this. I don't feel good doing this. And we just, we went from doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, Did we have an neurologists. incident with a belt, did we? Excuse me? We had an incident with a belt. You don't um, want to talk about that. You don't have to. You want to move on? Um, do you want to talk? Okay. Brian was hospitalized um, for approximately seven weeks. He put a belt around his neck. He tried to hurt himself. I attribute it to the place where I was renting before my home was built in uh, the Poconos. And you probably wondered, you were, you're a terrible mom, you did something oh, wrong, yeah, all that stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. My husband uh, and I, it's, we're lucky we're together. We've been married 17 years and he's, he's on the road to recovery. 
thanks to Dr. Rapp and her study. Yeah. What did you discover to be uh, influencing Brian's behavior? Brian's allergic to peanuts. Ethyl alcohol. Phenol. Foods. Wheat, soy, milk, corn. What else did I miss? So you get, you get more than... <laughs> I lose track. You know, we're still in the middle of testing, and sure. it takes a very long time. Sure. And the insurance doesn't want to pay it, so it takes even longer. The insurance companies say uh, they don't want to cover this because it's not traditional allergy medical care, which is a yeah. bunch of hogwash. Right. I, I thank you. There are other people. We've got all the hands in the house up now. <laughs> are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Just one second. Caller, you wanted to say. Yeah, hi, Phil. I'm a speech therapist. I work in a special education school with children who have a lot of behavior issues. Um, I'm, I'm very happy for these parents that they've been ab able to overcome um, these issues with their children. However, I'm very concerned that parents who may be watching the program who have children with children with true emotional disorders might develop false hope. This is true, and I think that you should not get the impression from what we've said that every illness that plagues children or adults is due to environmental illness. But what we are saying is it's a piece of the pie for some individuals, and you ought to at least consider it. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Thank you yeah. for making I, that point. I thank you. Uh, you're a what? I'm a speech therapist in a special education school. So you see um, uh, young oh, people yeah. with uh, behavior that's outside the, the norm? norm. We, oh, it, exactly. It's outside of the norm. Yeah. And, and it's very similar to some of the behaviors. And it doesn't mean you've had red dye, too, yeah. or your or, uh, Cocoa Pops. Yeah, exactly. I understand that. Uh, but but Dr. Uh, and Dr. Rapp does not claim to uh, have a magic elixir for everything. Absolutely But not. she does step forward to say that we would be surprised to learn how uh, influencing is our environment, especially in the new and industrial age, on our behavior. It affects the brain chemistry and causes all kinds of distracting uh, episodes. And we'll be back in just a moment. To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Hi, caller. I got all kinds of hands in the air, and you, but you wanted to say briefly. I want to see if I can just get some calls on here. Hi. Um, this is a question for the doctor. Um, since we've probably trained our seven-year-old daughter, she's still been wetting her pants awake and also in the bed, and sometimes she messes them also. And I've been kind of arguing with her doctor about um, sending her to an allergist because I feel that it, it might be that, or then again, it could be something biological. I was just wondering if you could um, give me a point of it's, view. Or... It's very difficult to tell, but children that wet the bed after the age of five are frequently sensitive to fruit juices and milk, Stop the fruit juices and milk, and they're better if she isn't see the appropriate doctor to take care of her. Are you there? Call her high. Yes, I'm here. I just wanted to let you know, I've had this problem with my daughter. She's going to be nine years old next month. I fought with my family for eight years that she had a problem with her milk, and they wouldn't believe me. I would show the movies and everything about how they, the children would have their personality changes and everything. Yeah. And she finally went to a doctor. Please. And now they know that she does have a personality change with this milk. And I just wanted to let mothers know that the kids fight me because you know your own child. and you You're know saying that regular happy. cow's yeah, milk did this to her, did it? All the children out there. Yeah. Right. This wasn't your daughter. It was somebody else's no, daughter. it was my daughter. But you my said, daughter. Yeah, but your family didn't believe you. No. This my own husband wouldn't believe me. He yeah, but it, it, was, it was regular cow's milk did this. Yes. Yeah. So because she can't have any dairy product. Um, That's because allergies have always thought to Ben, the runny nose is the sneezing when you mow the lawn, and people just don't associate these with kinds behavioral of things. changes or mm -hmm. aggression. Right. Or, are you there, mm -hmm. caller? Hi. Hi. What do you think? I have a four-year-old son who's got terrible allergies, and um, sometimes causes bad behavioral problems. Right. He sees an allergist every Friday, and gets four shots. They tell me that. Behavioral problems cannot be triggered off by his allergies. I don't, I don't agree. Years. I don't know what to do or where to take mm. it from here. I'm talking to lots of people. He's seen therapists and specialists. On top of, on top of it, he has a, a speech delay, um, which we thought had something to yeah. do with it. Um, Dr. Rapp is not surprised by your comment. Uh, there are apparently a number of uh, uh, allergists out here who, who, who believe that. 
as in a lot of things in medicine, there are tremendous divisions here. What causes this? Who's overstating? Who isn't? I can remember a doctor, incidentally, on the Donahue show 24 years ago saying, babies who drink cow's milk are always backed up in the nose and they always get, and I thought, don't say that about milk. He was right. Dr. Spock. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, how do you help this woman other than to say, Doris Rapp's book is titled, Is This Your Child? Here's a review of some of the symptoms that she's uncovered. She also wants this caller to know that for 17 years, you likewise believe that allergies Absolutely. couldn't cause behavior. I'll Fortunately, I found out about environmental medicine, and that's made the difference. And we'll be back in just a moment. Uh, for a tip sheet, uh, you may send with a self-addressed stamped envelope to, what is PARF the acronym for? Practical Par Allergy Research Foundation. P.O. Box 60, Buffalo. The zip is 14223. You wanted to... Uh uh, and the 800 number is 843-3440, yes. I feel like I've the, the gods have sent me to the show. My son's four years old. He's been diagnosed as asthmatic from a very young age. He had allergy testing done at two, and now he's four. And they sent him to the allergist. I took him last week. They asked him what side, you know, where he wanted tested. So he said his arms. So they put his arms, they put all the little 24 dots on. They said, we're going to prick you. And he went, uh, and wiped off like all the dots. They said, oh, just send them back in six months. Now, he's not as severe as some of these children, but he does have severe allergy and asthmatic problems. Am I going to the wrong type of a doctor? Or Well, let me tell you some tips of how you can figure out answers on your own, just for a couple of minutes. Number one is have your child write or draw before they eat. If they have asthma, have them blow in a peak pocket flow meter, find out how they feel, and then 20 minutes or 30 minutes after they eat, have them write and draw blow into this thing again, see how they feel, and if it's a food, you'll know it. And you can do the same thing in all the rooms in your house, all the rooms in the school, yeah. compare inside and outside, and you'll be able to pinpoint the place or the foods that cause Here, trouble. Here's an eight-year-old handwriting during an allergy test. This is before the test. This is during the test. I'm and this is after oat treatment. Uh, call, uh, you, we have a caller. You wanted to ask. Yes, hi. I'm Dr. Daryl Altman. I'm the medical director of the Food Allergy Center in Little Neck. I'm also a board-certified allergist and pediatrician. And I'm curious about those very dramatic tapes. Part of the reason that Dr. Rapp's approach is so controversial is because the technique is, is not usually blinded. Um, what I'm curious about is, were those children aware of what they were being given? Not, all, not always. In fact, I tested this youngster over here, Ned, with a placebo and told him that I was going to test him for banana and he thought he would have a reaction. He had no reaction. We don't tell him what we're testing and I'd like to invite you to come to my office and look. You'll never be the same. I'm going to take you up on that. Uh, you come. Yeah. Right? Do Do Doctor. Yes. Yeah. What is, uh, yeah. What is it then that, uh, what's the uh, suspicion among the nu nutritional uh, allergists uh, about Dr. Rapp, if any. Oh, well, all that we're curious about is about the blinding, because what's called the double blind technique, which is when the doctor doesn't know, nor does the patient know. Then, what then the, you wouldn't know who to videotape. Right, obviously, 1978. A, no, obviously there's a person behind the scene who knows which is being given, but that is the gold standard. It's the scientific standard to which all medicine in this country has. For a transcript of Donahue, send $3 to Journal Graphics, 1535 Brad Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000. To order a video cassette for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. Uh, Doris Rapp's MD, her book is, Is This Your Child? Discovering and Treating Unrecognized Allergies in, children's and, and, in Children and Adults You Wanted to Ask. 
Uh, I just like to say that I have a 15 month old uh, nephew and my, uh, all the symptoms that you described above apply to him. And my poor sister, this is her first baby. And she just is at her wit's end, not knowing what she's doing wrong. And I hope you're watching, Ro, because I really think that this is Anthony's problem. This whole thing is so empowering because you learn what you can do instead of all the things that you can't do. Yeah. Okay. My question was with the lady here, she said she was tested also. And I was wondering if there's any chance that this could be hereditary. It absolutely. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Television is all kinds of basic sweats and t-shirts. Taltex, a new way of looking at clothes. Remember your first games? They can be your child's first games too. Candyland, Shoots and Ladders, and Uncle Wiggly, all from Milton Bradley. Guest accommodations provided by the luxurious Drake Hotel, a Swiss hotel on Park Avenue at 56th Street. Call 800-DRAKE-NY and ask about our weekend getaway and honeymoon packages.